is Amy from the New City Library, and we've been traveling around the world with story time. Today, we'll be traveling to Italy. Let's look at our globe and find Italy. Here we are in the United States of America. If you cross the Atlantic Ocean to Europe, you will find Italy right there. Italy is kind of shaped like a boot. So what do they have in Italy? Let's look. Well, the Italian flag is red, white, and green. It has one, two, three colors. In Italy, they have delicious ice cream. They call it gelato. Another delicious and famous thing that you'll find in Italy is whoop, Pasta, yum, oh, I love pasta. You'll also find grapes and they make lots of delicious foods and drinks out of grapes in Italy. In Italy, they speak Italian and they say hello by saying ciao. You wanna try that? Ciao. So let's read some stories about Italy. And our first story is about that famous pig, Olivia, and she's going to the city of Venice in Italy. Let's see what happens. This story was written by Ian Falconer, and I'm reading it to you with permission from Simon and Schuster Books. It's time for spring vacation, Olivia. She decided that she and her family ought to spend a few days in Venice. There was a lot of packing to be done. Olivia, you won't be needing your snorkel, said her mother, or your flippers. Mother, apparently the city is often underwater, and, or your water skis. As they went through the airport, Olivia was searched for weapons. She was very pleased. On the plane, Olivia asked her mother about the food in Venice. Don't worry, sweetheart, you can get pizza and ice cream everywhere. Everywhere? Olivia was relieved. They arrived very late at their hotel. Olivia was so sleepy. She didn't even notice the view from her window. Look at that beautiful view. Early the next morning, they set forth. They crossed a pretty little bridge and then another and then another. Wait, cried Olivia. We've been crossing the same canal. I think we're lost and my blood sugar is getting low. We'll get some ice cream, promised her mother. It's called gelato, replied Olivia. They all decided to have gelato. Crossing a big bridge, Olivia saw the Grand Canal for the first time, lined with its glittering, many-colored palazzos. Olivia said to her mother with an edge of hysteria in her voice, Oh, please! Oh, please, mother! Can't we live in a palazzo on the Grand Canal? It was a life-changing experience for Olivia. She needed another gelato, or maybe two, or three. When she was refreshed, they wandered on. Finally, they passed through a dark archway and into to the Piazzo San Marco. Olivia was overcome by its beauty. I think I could use another, her mother sighed. I think we all could. They needed more ice cream. Olivia wanted to buy corn to feed the pigeons. She held out the corn, but couldn't find many pigeons. But they soon found her. Uh-oh, too many, a little scary. <laughs> After that exhausting encounter, Olivia required another gelato. The next day, Olivia begged her parents, Oh, Mommy, Daddy, please, can we take a gondola ride? Gondola, gondola. 
Olivia negotiated the price. The gondolier waved them aboard with a giant prego. Tourists always too much gelato, he thought. Olivia found it very restful. The gondolier did not. They came out onto the Grand Canal and passed under the magnificent Rialto Bridge. Eventually, they emerged out from under the Bridge of Sighs. Olivia sighed. <sighs> By now, Olivia was completely entranced. I must have something to remember Venice by. I must find the perfect souvenir. How about a chandelier? Olivia thought that's bigger than your room, said her mother. What about a gondola? Sweetheart, try to find something you can carry. Lace, very pretty, but not really very Olivia. A mask, no, thought Olivia. I'll only wear it once. Perfume. Olivia doesn't really like perfume. Besides, she's planning her own line. Fussy by Olivia. On their last day in Venice, Olivia and her family went back to San Marco. The basilica was all peach and gold in the late afternoon light. Mother and father were finishing their coffee. Olivia and Ian were playing by the bell tower. I found it, cried Olivia, the perfect souvenir. What is that, asked her mother. One of the actual stones of Venice, said Olivia, from the bell tower. Olivia, said her mother, if everyone took a piece of Venice with them, the city would fall down. Now leave that with the waiter. We've got to get to the airport. Mommy, are those bells ringing for us? Yes, dear, they're reminding us that we're late. Uh-oh. Oh my, I think we'd better hurry. Olivia turned to take one last look at Venice. Look, they're waving us goodbye. I'll always remember Venice, Mommy. Do you think Venice will remember me? Probably. As soon as she got on the plane, Olivia fell fast asleep and dreamed. The end. I have one more story about a delicious food from Italy, pizza and pienza by Susan Fion. And it is being read to you with permission from HarperCollins. This is the Queen Margarita of Italy in the year 1889. And this is me sitting on the steps in front of my house today. I live in Pienza, a small town in Italy where Pope Pius II was born. This is the main town square and our little cathedral. My family has been here for many generations. Life here is still pretty old fashioned. The trucks are small, the policemen ride horses, and people walk everywhere. On Saturday mornings, I go to the outdoor market where I know almost everyone. My favorite place to go is Giovanni's, and my favorite food is pizza. I close my eyes and breathe in all the warm and savory smells. I love to eat pizza anywhere, anytime, even when it rains, I eat it walking in the street. Here in Italy, we eat our main meal at midday, like we eat lunch. Everyone comes home from school and work to eat and talk. Look at all that yummy food. While I'm eating, I'm dreaming about the next pizza pie. I've asked my grandmother to teach me how to make it by hand. Just like Giovanni, who cooks it in a brick oven, he, 
brick oven heated by a wood fire. After school, I walked to the library to read about the history of pizza. Incredible, I discovered that the story of pizza is very old, very old, in fact. Ancient Greeks and Italians ate flatbreads with onions, herbs, and honey. And many Mediterranean cultures from Egyptians and Babylonians to Armenians and Israelites have been eating some type of pizza for centuries. But pizza as we know it was really born in Naples, Italy. At first, it was peasant food sold by the slice in the street. The tomato came to Italy sometime in the 1500s from South America, maybe with Christopher Columbus, who was Italian. Mozzarella cheese was made from the milk of water buffaloes, probably imported from Asia. Then a famous pizza maker in Naples invented the pizza margarita, green, white, and red, like the new Italian flag and named after the queen herself. The first pizzeria in the United States opened in New York City in 1905. But pizza really became popular after the Second World War. Soldiers returning from Italy talked about it when they got home and everyone wanted to try it. Now there is pizza in Pienza and all around the world. The end. I don't know about you, but I love pizza. I love pizza anyway in Italy in New York, anywhere I can get my hands on pizza, I love it. I hope you like traveling to Italy and we'll try to get ourselves to another country very, very soon. <laughs>